We want to get everybody moving down to the hill, facing up the hill. So if everybody can stand up, stretch out, and then move over this way. Thank you. You guys are a good walk crew. The committee throws every year. Uh, the Toronto Public Space Committee is an organization in Toronto whose goal is to get people more aware about public space issues in the city and to get them engaged in those public spaces. Um, and Human River, our goal is to get people out and about in the city and learning about uh, Toronto's history through a lost creek, the Garrison Creek. So um, today uh, we're going to be celebrating the Garrison Creek. It's the Toronto's largest buried river. Um, the biggest river that flew between the Humber and the Don. We have a little miniature example of what that creek may have looked like back in the day. It's our interpretation. And um, basically the Garrison Creek um, formed uh, after the Wisconsin glacier, glacier moved back over 10,000 years ago. And um, after the glacier left, it started cutting its path, cutting a valley through the sands, going towards, towards the lake, creating the creek. Where we are now was actually part of the creek valley, which is one of the reasons you have us coming down into this pit. But the other reason is because they also had the Christie Pits sand pit here, where they would dig sands to do different construction projects in the city. And um, when the creek was flowing and healthy, it was nourishing oak and pine forests in this area. And lots of different communities would have been able to um, use the creek for their water systems and stuff like that. The Aboriginals would have used it for fishing. There were Atlantic could have gone underneath and maybe watch out for the trolls. <laughs> and so over the years, I don't know if, who, who's joined us before? Who remembers the clowns? They went to go swimming and they couldn't find the creek. So they got their shovels out and they were trying to dig up this bridge. They're like, wow, there's a creek under here. <laughs> so what, what does it mean? Why, why would we want this bridge still to be in the city fabric? It's old. It was beautiful. There's a picture of it here. Pretty amazing. But what else? If there's a separation. You've got green space, right? and then it stops, and then it continues on the other side. We don't just, we're not the only creatures that use green spaces. So I'm going to tell you a story. About six years ago, before this whole human river thing was happening, I was in my apartment, and I noticed, actually I was having a shower, and I noticed something on the floor, and I thought, that isn't what I think it is. Please. <laughs> That's big, and it's moving pretty fast into the corner and I just dried off and I thought I'm going to deal with this slowly. Wow. What is it doing there? <laughs> oh, it must be a neighbor's pet. So I gathered it up, or I tried to gather it up and it went into the storage, under, right across my apartment into the storage compartment. I didn't see it. I started talking to my neighbors and my neighbor's a journalist for Globe and Mail and he's scratching his head and he's like, I think I know what this is. And he goes, the next day he posts on my door an article about the Jefferson Salamander, a rare guy. And it's been disrupted because we were doing road work in the area and its natural course of, of its life would be to go through this section of the city and we were putting our infrastructure to block it. So maybe it wasn't a pet. Maybe it was a Jefferson salamander looking for a new route home. I don't know. <laughs> but that's my, my gossip for you today. <laughs> so just so you know, this, this bridge was only above ground for 20 years, 20 some odd years. It was completed just after the turn of the century. 1900 and buried by 1930. So not very long to have such a 
impressive piece of infrastructure visible for us. person done is filled it in so that many of the houses that you see in this picture now, the dirt, the level that we're standing on now would actually be around the roofs of these house, houses. So they filled it all in and then built again on top of them. Okay, so just again how we've kind of changed the topography of the city over time. Thank you. 